If you are a Jane Austen fan, you will no doubt have been asked this question in your life. Why do people still like Jane Austen? Or, a little bit more irritatingly, why do women still like Jane Austen? For the habits of women are always a mystery. Now, if you like Jane Austen books, if you haven't picked up a Jane Austen book, I think the answer is kind of obvious. But if you haven't, or if you have and you still don't understand, don't worry, I'll be here to guide you through. We'll find the answers together. Now, I am in a place called Stourhead. Have you ever heard of Stourhead? Is it ringing a bell? Well, later in this video, it will become obvious why. I am here with some dear friends to eat things, knit things, watch period dramas, frolic in the fields, and generally be a little bit cringe. I apologise, not. I defend myself endlessly. We're having a rollicking good time, but I thought I'd take a few minutes out to discuss this topic, basically so I never have to discuss it again while well, you can look at pretty landscapes. And wish you were here. Deal? Deal. Okay, I know I'm in partial shadow, but I really don't want you to miss this view. So look at this view, not at me. The first reason could be decadent escapism. We love watching rich people live, or maybe more accurately, we really like watching them suffer just a little bit. Maybe it's because the narrative is a little bit cleaner. If you're rich, there's less of like a layered pain to that. Often you're not also wondering about unionising or wondering where your next meal is going to come from or being swept up in some kind of political brawl in which you are the pawn. You're simply worrying about who you should marry and who doesn't want a simple life like that. And maybe there's also some kind of comfort in... <laughs> <laughs> They're approaching. <laughs> I got <laughs> this is all on. Go, keep going, keep going. There seems to be a traffic jam of flying YouTubers coming through. Maybe watching these people's lives, which we could be potentially jealous of, is some way gratifying because it still takes them 400 pages to find love. 400 f pages. And there's definitely modern comparisons to that. Let's think Made in Chelsea, let's think Love Island. But it might not actually be what Jane Austen intended. In Paula Bourne's The Genius of Jane Austen, she describes this as phenomenon as big house syndrome, the syndrome that Hollywood had when they were adapting Jane's books. She said, one of the characteristics of the heritage dramatizations of Austen novels was that the houses were all too big. There was an undifferentiated view of the great families and estates of the past. The producers and designers and location scouts failed to see that Austin tends to speak for the values of the lesser gentry and to scorn such idle, vain aristocrats as Lady Catherine, who's the embodiment of pride and prejudice, and the Dowager Viscountess in persuasion. So although we might like watching rich people frolic around in dresses, that might not actually be what Jane Austen intended and therefore might not be the answer to our question. So what is the answer? Well, to answer that, I'm gonna take you to one of those film locations, those naughty, naughty Hollywood producers picked out. Do you recognise it yet? Miss Elizabeth. Maybe the reason we all love Jane Austen is the fantasy of self-determination. Now we know that Jane Austen didn't exactly deal in radical upheaval, but that doesn't mean she wasn't pushing the needle forward. And we don't just need people who are doing radical acts and setting things on fire. We also need the needle pushers, the pokers, the prodders, the literary fire stokers. And Jane Austen gave all of her characters within their own situations, their best case scenario at the end. Even people like Charlotte or Miss Bates, they don't get an eat, pray, love moment where they get their own careers and they get to cavort across Italy eating pasta, but they do get financial security, something that wasn't a given even for these relatively privileged women. In Jane Austen books, nobody eats the rich, but some of them do get to marry them and then redirect the wealth to their otherwise struggling 
families. Jane Austen wasn't a stranger to that scenario. She moved about a lot in her own life due to financial and social insecurity. Being a spinster then meant that society didn't really have a place for you and it's a fate that quite a few of the women in her books come close to. And perhaps Jane did see herself as a thriving spinster but perhaps she also knew that that was incredibly unrealistic to the 1700s reader. She might have in some ways defied the financial prejudice of being a single woman in a region age but she's not naive enough to think that her characters can also get that again and again and again instead of that though they do find love at the ripe old age of 27 even when everybody else has already put them on the rickety rusty shelf and even her richest heroine Emma who is also the most unlikable coincidence gets to be taken down a peg by a truly hot man who also very unusually sees her as his equal that's you know after she learns not to mock poor people Jane Austen doesn't deal in retribution and maybe that's something that I personally love about her. She deals instead in hope. Due maybe in a small part or maybe a large part to the fact that the only man that she ever kind of flirted with and thought she was going to get married to couldn't marry her because she wasn't rich enough. If you live now, which I'm assuming that you do unless you're a time traveller, in which case hey you're probably oversaturated with the rags to riches story steve jobs taylor swift that woman who did the blood thing and now she's going to jail and maybe for the modern reader jane austen's a kind of balm to that in real life class barriers are rarely smashed in one lifetime they're rather eroded over generations and generations but between that change surely some people get to have relatively happy endings if not in real life at least in her books Um, I know. The final consideration for this huge conundrum that people often present me with. Maybe she's just good? I very rarely hear people ask, why do people still like Dickens, Chaucer, T.S. Eliot, Joyce? So maybe the premise of the question is just sexist? Is that the answer we've all been looking for? Certainly Jane Austen had her critics in her time but she also had an incredible amount of admirers and maybe we've forgotten that Jane Austen doesn't just have a historical relevance looking back at her work or a really useful function when it comes to setting her for GCSEs or A-levels because we've already created the textbooks. In 1821 which is four years after Jane Austen died a critic in the Quarterly Review said that she created fictional worlds with a regard to character hardly exceeded by Shakespeare himself. She was literally dubbed the prose Shakespeare in the Victorian era. George Eliot's husband, confusingly also called George, said, instead of description, the common and easy resource for novelists, she had the rare and difficult art of dramatic presentation. Instead of telling us what her characters are and what they feel, she presents the people and they reveal themselves. She's the original show and tell people. In this, she has never perhaps been surpassed, not even by Shakespeare. So while she may have been snubbed by some people you have met, the critics frankly don't agree. And when researching this, another thing I found really, really interesting was this passage at the end of that book I was quoting by Paula Byrne. At the end, she says, if Jane Austen were alive today, she'd probably both be appalled by the movie adaptations of her books. She'd be baffled by the fact that the majority of the films emphasise the romantic aspect of her novels when her intention was to subvert and undermine the romantic. <gasps> What? It was ironic. Perhaps you'd be vexed that her comic genius and precise social satire have been assumed by Regency frocks, beautiful houses and impeccable landscape gardens like the one we're sitting in right now. If your impression of Jane Austen is nice dresses and beautiful gardens and rich people, you're not wrong, but they're sad people in nice frocks. Gardens that can be taken away from them at any moment. And class boundaries that aren't necessarily smashed, but are proved malleable, bendable, and somewhere in all of that chaos, a little bit of happiness chiselled out. I'm just picturing Jane Austen sitting there with her fountain pen like chiselling out some kind of glee from this awful predicament she's found herself in like uh, 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 uh. anyway. She got to the house. Uh. 
Thanks for watching the video. This video has been made possible by The Gumption Club, people who tip me so I can keep giving these videos away for free. Thank you so much to them. If you are a Jane Austen connoisseur, let me know in the comments below for people who have never tried Jane Austen what they should try first. Is it a TV show? Is it a film? Or is it one of the books? If you like this video, I think you might like this video or this video, but who am I to say? Thank you so much for watching. Frog Snog out.